This video is brought to you by Langoni Cues. Hi pool players, welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. In this lesson we're going to dive into some advanced pattern play with me playing a rack of 15 ball versus the ghost. I'm going to guide you through my entire thinking process, all the decision making and I'm sure you're gonna learn a lot from this. Remember, if you ever wanna get a review done of your own match or trainings like this with a screen recording, shoot me a personal message and I will jump on that for you as soon as I can. So let's jump onto my pro start table right now and start analyzing some advanced patterns. All right, here we go with a nice example of a 15 ball layout. Myself playing the ghost. You break, you get ball in hand. If you run out, you score a point. If you miss, the ghost gets a point. And you can do a race to 10. You can do all kinds of various games. If you scratch, it doesn't matter. You still get ball in hand. And I pick this rack let me freeze it here because of all this congestion we have a seven ball that doesn't pass this one we have a three and four that are a little bit messed up the one ball and the 13 the one still goes here this has to be played as a combo so we have four potential combinations or i have to make decisions to break these out now what I was thinking right out of the gate here is the two and the nine are fairly doable, but I have to be quite straight in to control this two ball. So the problem with this combination is that if I would land here, it's extremely tough to make it because of the friction check out my video about why combinations are difficult and the solutions i have to be on this side of the combination to make it first of all easier to see and to pocket but also to control the three ball after contact the three ball will go over here very hard to do when the two will be will be here and the cue wall ball will be somewhere here that's not easy to get to that spot on the table it's doable but another option would be perhaps is to make this combo 113 then the one will be somewhere here with the cue ball here try to open them up but my fear was that if i open these balls up this one or this one i'm pushing them towards that combination and i'm afraid i'm not going to be straight in anymore on this two but i could be here and then it's super tough to control still an option because the two could run into these guys open them up creatively could be doable but on this day my final decision was you know what i am gonna try to open up this three ball from here pocket the one there run into the three not the four but the three because then i'm gonna be still looking at an almost straight line on this two nine and i can control that two ball and the cue ball better so very advanced right out of the gate but i just want to share my thinking my analysis of this situation i'm not saying it's perfect i'm saying it was good enough and well thought out for me in this moment also this seven nine we have to look at later again a combo that has to be played from a fairly straight in angle here i'm coming off the rail with a tip of left to just get to that side of the three to push it there now this is what i mean i'm fairly straight in on this combo so that means i can control this two it's gonna land right in front of the side hopefully if it doesn't roll off or something on your table i know my table well the pro star table is very reliable from langoni so i'm not afraid to roll the ball 
accounts and the speed is good enough now this is also tricky because again i have to avoid these balls i can't play this with a high ball can't play with stun i have to play this with a draw shot and then a tip of right ever so slightly to play field goal position between this 11 and 15. If I end up anywhere here, I'm a happy camper. That's good enough for me. Just don't play too hard where you hit the five or too much spin, I'm, I must say, there, because then you're stuck. Without spin, you might land behind the 15. We need a little touch of right spin to open that up. And we speak about this a lot. When you can play into the line of position like this, that gives you the biggest percentage of speed control. The margin for error on speed control is better and bigger when you can come into the line of position. So always look for that pool players. That's going to make your life as a run out player much, much easier. So here I'm looking at that pattern I just discussed I'm gonna play this with this low right a nice pinchy draw stroke not a full stroke see I'm not going all the way through and look how nicely that worked this landed so well that I don't even have to go side rail side rail I can hold this here on the inside of the four perhaps to play two rails around or draw it over here because the five to the six is going to be a very important shot remember we spoke about getting good on this seven and i believe it's the 12 combination the six is lying great for that if i can get straight in on it if I get here, I have to go off the rail and then it's tougher to land exactly on this spot. So the five ball is going to be a very big ball. I believe I have an angle here. I choose to draw it from watching this back. It looks like I could follow it with top right, but I choose to draw it with right because I kind of want to get a kick here to get more to the middle of the table but I land up a bit too short and too straight so I have to hit this harder than I wanted to from here there my plan was to roll it with some spin come up there now I have to play this with stun perhaps a touch of left to avoid the 15 and I want to really, really try to get straight in on the six. That's the key for the run out here, the remaining balls. That's nicely done. See, I don't have to go off the bottom reel now. I can come off. Uh, I can just draw this ever so slightly towards this seven and 12 combination there and what i mean by that also if i would have landed here to make the combo from here i have to cut this seven back and what happens is the seven ball will get that spin and that carries over to the second ball and that ball gets a different reaction than you anticipated and it makes the pocketing much harder also, if the cue ball would land here, I have to cut it this way. You're going to give right spin because you hit it on the right side. Go check out that combination video. I go much more in depth on it. Landing straight in like this also means I have nice possibilities for controlling the seven. It's not going to move that much. There you see a good example. And now we have a great option with high left to go one, two, and to the inside of the eight. Every time a ball is just off the rail, like perhaps two balls or three balls, it's very smart 
to play towards this rail if you have to get to the other side of the table. So instead of doing this and now having to go back there, it works really well and natural to come to the inside. Then this entire section is open and free for position. That works really, really good. So keep that in mind for your own runouts. Playing to the inside. You see, you just want to touch that third rail. That's your goal. Sometimes you land a little bit funny. But on average, you get great results. From where it looks here, I can just softly draw it. But apparently, I chose to go off the rail and back. Sometimes when you stand there behind the table, the angle is a bit different. And once again, we have that combo. This one's more straight in, so a bit easier. Soft draw. And see, because I'm straight in on it, I have a great visual siding of the combo. I have good control of this ball. And that brings me back in position or keeps me in position. Now I get to play a nice shot from the yo-yo drill. I'll put a link here in the top. Just low left towards the middle of the table. Here it comes. And my final thinking for this, this is interesting. Some amateur players, they hit this and they get too straight in on this final ball. And what you want to do is you want to just stay above it in this area here. Because again, remember coming into the position, if we touch this rail and then with a tip of high left, we touch that rail and we're coming towards that 15. And that is again, see that percentage of speed margin that we have and i really really like that if you can find those routes your play will your runouts will improve tremendously if you can start finding those paths to come into the line of position you can't really do it here we have to play to a certain area off the rail so this is more speed control and look what's going to happen I'm just short, a little bit agitated because I have to cut this in now. Still going to go for the same shot, high left, but I just have to hit it a bit softer. But look, one, two, and you see it coming down table. That's high percentage. That's what you're looking for. So put that in your arsenal and bear down on this final shot. Playing these long racks makes you focus on finishing also. Nicely done. And put these tricks and tips in your bag and make good use of them. There you go, pool fans. I hope you learned a lot from this rack. This is the first of many 15 ball racks that I will do. I'm going to post a link here on the side for another 8 ball analyzing session also very useful for you eight ball players and remember if you're ready to finally work on the mental part of your game head over to the terminator college join those many hundreds of players that are already studying right there i'll see you in the next episode